Let's go over the math section of the TIS exam. This section of the test is going to have 36 questions. It's going to be 54 minutes. So you've got quite a bit of time, but you've got a lot of problems to work out. I, myself, as well as our editorial team, have really dug in to understand every single topic that's on the test. And we've developed a lot of content and material that would help you learn those exact topics. We partnered with Brandon Kraft, who really is the expert in TEAS math. He's got a lot of YouTube videos. He's got a website you can check out. He did about 50 videos for us on each and every one of these topics that we're about to go over, kind of explaining you know, exactly how to work through these types of uh, problems in these different uh, areas within math. He goes over the actual questions that are in the TEAS Tutor online course and the Smart Edition Study Guide. So if you have either one of those, you know, definitely watch those videos. If you don't have the TEAS Tutor online course or the Study Guide, definitely pick it up. It's going to help you with all of these areas. Now, you will have a calculator on the test. It'll be on your screen. You don't need to bring one. It's kind of a basic like four function calculator. There's going to be a couple tips and strategies that I'm going to give you that would definitely have you using that calculator. You know, in terms of like formulas and how much you need to memorize, it's a very good idea to know a lot of the formulas. Uh, but some of the questions will give you hints on what those formulas are. So you kind of have that, but but I would still, if you can, you know, kind of try and remember as many of the formulas as you can. Kind of just getting into all the individual topics within the math section. There's addition and subtraction. You guys know that. There's basic multiplication and division. You guys should know that as well. Uh, but it can get a little tricky with the signed multiplication and division. You know, you got to watch out for that. That can kind of throw a little kink in there and trip some people up. So make sure you're good and you're familiar with signed multiplication and division. Probably the biggest thing that I can share with you, and I've watched so many videos to really understand what types of questions are going to be the test. Our editorial team has actually sat for the test several times. Um, we've done all the practice tests from ATI. And what I can tell you guys is you will see a lot of order of operations questions. So you need to know that uh, those order of operations, like the back of your hand, that is the PEMDAS, the please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Uh, that's parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. That is the order you need to work those problems in. That's the order of the operation. So a good majority of the questions that you're going to get are going to be around that. So make sure you know that. Uh, that's probably one of the biggest tips I can give you guys on how to really get a good score on this math section. You're going to have decimals and fractions, and there's going to be changing decimals to fractions, converting among fractions, decimals, and percentages. And a really good tip and strategy for you to use while you're taking the test is going back to that calculator that you have on your screen. Uh, for a lot of fractions, you can just turn that into a decimal on the calculator. So if you have something like five eighths plus two ninths, you can divide five by eight, divide that, get the decimal, and then also divide two by nine, get that decimal, and then you can add those decimals. And that might make a lot more sense for you. Um, if you're good at math and you can add and subtract and multiply and divide, fractions, then do that. But you know, if you want to double check yourself, that's a little tip that works for a lot of people. Um, a lot of people say that's a, a really helpful thing to do. It might take a little more time to punch it into the calculator, but if you can really just double check yourself and if you can work better with decimals, then, then do that and use that little tip. Same for ordering. You, know, you might see some questions on ordering fractions from least to greatest. Uh, again, you can turn those into decimals using the calculator, and then that's probably going to make a lot more sense for you. You're going to have addition and subtraction of fractions. Uh, so that is subtracting a fraction from a fraction, adding fractions with like denominators, subtracting fractions without like denominators. So those are things that you'll see. We have multiplication and division of fractions, multiplying a fraction by a fraction, multiplying a fraction by a whole or mixed number, dividing fraction by a fraction, dividing a fraction by a whole or a mixed number. So you will see all of those things and, and you need to be pretty comfortable with that. You might get some questions on kind of rates of change. And that's, you know, a car was going 50 miles an hour and 
over the course of a distance, it went 60 miles an hour. What was the rate of change? How many miles per hour difference did it make while it was going over that distance? And then you're gonna get into some algebra and it's mostly gonna be college algebra. So you should have seen a lot of this stuff. You may have even seen some of this stuff in high school, but um, that's about the, the level that you'll see is, is kind of basic college algebra. That kind of revolves around equations with one variable. So those are gonna be your linear equations. Uh, so you need to be very comfortable with those. And there's a couple different types of linear equations. There's the one-step linear equations, two-step linear equations, multi-step linear equations, and solving linear equations, just kind of in general, you're gonna to need to be able to solve all of those types of linear equations. You're gonna have real world mathematical problems. So they're gonna give you kind of a couple sentences that kind of lay out some real world problem and you need to be able to turn that real world math problem into an equation. So you need to be able to pull out the numbers and you need to know whether you need to be multiplying or dividing, and then to kind of just turn it into an equation and be able to solve for that. And you know, you might get integer problems. It might have kind of the negative and positive numbers, uh, fractions, decimals, all that stuff. So be able to do that, practice those types of problems. You're going to see stuff around powers and exponents, roots, radicals, polynomials, all those kinds of things. So those are definitely uh, things that you wanna practice. Really just practicing all this math stuff as much as you can, just the repetition of these math problems until you get comfortable with them. You will see a lot of stuff around standards of measure. You know, there's a lot of stuff you can study in math and you might be overwhelmed. There's so much to study, but you know, the standards of measure stuff is something that you need to know for nursing school Regardless, so you're gonna to have to spend the time to learn this stuff. You would really benefit once you do get into nursing school, which you will, you're gonna to need to know all this stuff. You need to know the metric system and all kinds of things around conversions. So it's just smart to know this stuff because it's stuff you're gonna to need to know as an actual uh, nurse once you get there. You're gonna to need to be able to do conversions of like volume and weight, things like pints, quarts, ounces, meters, kilometers, milligrams, centigrams. You need to know all that stuff. Know your whole metric system. You you need to know this for nursing school in general, and it's going to help you on the TEAS test. So you might as well take the time now to learn it. You're going to be a little bit farther ahead uh, once you get into school. Yeah, so that's conversions with a standard system, metric system. You may also see uh, questions on Fahrenheit to Celsius. So, you know, know that formula. You're going to get a lot of questions on interpreting, or you won't get a lot of questions, but you'll get some questions on interpreting uh, graphics. So couple different types of graphics that you should be familiar with. And those are line charts, bar charts, circle graphs, and you kind of just need to know what they are and how to uh, pull out the data that you're seeing in those graphs. You need to be able to know the x-axis and the y-axis and kind of what each one is telling you and, and be able to pull out that information and be able to answer questions. That may go to things also around, you know, mean, median, mode, range. Those are kind of grouped together. So definitely be studying those things. Uh, you're going to have some of the right triangles and finding the area of two-dimensional objects kind of some trigonometry it's not going to be a ton in there but you will get some so know those things like the uh, finding the surface area and volume of cubes or right prisms and those are kind of those, some of those formulas i mentioned that they might give you some hints at solving but it's always helpful to know that stuff you know you're not going to get a ton of questions on this stuff but uh, many times you know you might get one or two in the test and with only 36 questions you want to make sure you're not dropping any of these kinds of questions just the more you get right obviously the higher your score is going to be. Uh, so that's similar with circles. You will get some questions around that. Um, so know some of those terms like diameter, radius, know the circumference and the area of a circle. Those are going to be things that you might see. That's actually all the topics. Everything that I just went over, you shouldn't see anything outside of that. That's really going to cover everything. It is a lot to know. It is a lot to master. And really, again, just doing as many practice problems as you can. SmartEditionAcademy.com. If you go there, we have a free practice test, so you can take it there. Uh, if you want more practice tests, there's the TS Tutor practice test pack. And the full online course comes with eight practice tests uh, that help you identify those strengths and weaknesses. So use all that stuff. Jump in there. There's tons of videos, uh, 50 math videos, lots of lesson modules on all the math. So hopefully that'll all help you out. Drop a comment below. I want to know what 
anything that I missed. Uh, it should be pretty comprehensive. Of course, we could always miss something. So let me know if I missed anything. Let me know if you saw a particular type of questions that we should maybe add in and anything else that we can kind of do to uh, help everybody prepare more for the math section of the TIS. All right. Thanks, guys. Good luck on the test.